Hi there, Coach Sam from AYS. Today we're going to be working on Violin 1 of Iroquois Journey by Doug Spada. Okay, in this piece we have a lot of really um, short eighth notes. Not really short, but enough to make the bow bounce. So the type of stroke we're going to be using for this particular piece is the brush stroke. And just as a warm-up on any string, I'm going to go ahead and play just a couple beats on A and D strings, since that's mostly where we're going to be playing today. I have my metronome at 130 beats per minute. Okay, so we're going to start off warming up with the brush stroke. Again, it's going to be like we're painting the string. We're going to pretend there's a balloon attached to our bow stick that's lifting it up. And we're just going to bounce on the string. Again, you have to have really nice flexibility in your bow hand. You're not going to be moving forward and backward with your arm. It's really all coming from your wrist, okay? Almost like a little, like your hand's a little squid. So just a couple warm-ups. taking a look at is measures 4 through 21. In these measures we're going to be trying to keep our eighth notes nice and short off of the string if possible or just have slight separation in between them. And then we're going to focus on changing into those slurred eighth notes, um, making sure that our accents, though they're accents, that we try to do them in mezzo piano. And then in measure 18 we have to make sure that we don't run out of bow um, and that we get to the tip so we have enough bow for the remainder of those quarter notes in 18 leading into 19. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and play through that section at 1.30. So for mezzo piano when we're doing the brush stroke, we don't make any modifications other than moving our bow over to the fingerboard, rolling our stick away from us so that we have less hair on the bow. Less hair, less volume. Starting at measure four. One, two, three, rest. keep my eighth notes nice and short. For our accents in measure eight and measure nine, try to execute those even better by press, pressing the stick into the hair on the string. So at measure eight, I'm going to start measure seven to pick up two. space in between the slurred eighth note and then the staccato accented quarter note. So our slurred notes they need to be distinguished, they need to be nice and smooth, and then our eighth notes need to sound kind of picky. And you can almost clip the ends of these slurs to really accentuate the short quarters. So for example in measure five and then leading into nine, here we clip the end of that. Same thing in measure eight. So you're just clipping, but almost launching your bow up into the air. In measure 17, we're coming out of the end of a shorter phrase, so. Remember what I said about launching your bow? This is a good example where that comes in handy for bow placement right here. We have an, in 16, I'm sorry. Well, we're going down bow. Follow the bow's momentum. Place. So in that 
that measure, use more bow on the first and third beat. That will get you to the tip in order to have enough bow for measure 19. The next section we're going to look at is measures 37 through 53. In this section, we're going to focus on not rushing and also staying piano. This is kind of a different mood of the piece. We're going to be really nice and smooth. So let me go ahead and play through this section at quarter note equals 130. In this section, let's look out for not rushing, so keeping the pulse. Um, we make sure that our quarter notes have just a little bit of space in between them. Our half notes need to have a clear attack, but once we start the note, we're going to back off and just lightly accent, but more like decrescendo on each note. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to start at 37. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. crescendo on staccato notes. It might be kind of confusing since we have to keep those short, but as long as we put space in between them, a way we can crescendo is use more and more and more bow. More, more, more bow. So, make sure you're play stop, play stop, play stop. So play stop, play stop. I'm stopping the bow in between using my index finger or my right hand I'm pressing into the bow to stop it because you have to stop the bow in order to change directions okay for your legato just make sure that you're not you're not doing that you're not stopping in between your nice legato notes you want to give your quarter notes a little bit of space so you can go ahead and kind of launch them from the string so give them a little bit of space in between a little bit of air time metronome. Another way I like to practice not rushing is to just subdivide everything into eighth notes. So a half note is going to be one and two and, so four eighth notes. Let me demonstrate what I mean right here. So right now we're just focusing on not rushing. Once more at 37, ready, and. you're keeping the pulse, not rushing or slowing down, okay? The next section we're going to look at is measures 99 until the end. In this section we're going to be looking out for making a difference in between the length of our eighth notes and then our quarter notes, even though they're all staccato. We, need, we just need to make our quarter notes slightly longer, so a slightly more time on the string before we separate them. Another thing we're going to look at is accenting the first beat. Because we have um, a quarter note on the second beat, we want to da 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 when the accenting is supposed to be da 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 What I like to imagine is a is a bass drum player in a marching band where you know in this section you're going to be accenting the first beat of the measure, so it's going to be bum 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 you know almost like really big drums. And another thing we're going to be looking out for is not rushing those quarter notes. So if you need to subdivide everything into eighth notes again, um, make sure your metronome is at 130 and you're practicing not rushing and then accenting the first beat as well. Let me go ahead and play through this section just to make sure we have an idea of what to look out for. All right, so measure 99 until the end. We're not going to start up here at the upper half of the bow. We're going to run out of bow and it's not going to be the correct style. So this section of the piece, 
most of the most of the piece actually is going to be in the lower half of the bow so you can get that bounce okay make sure you stay in between your lanes the bridge and the fingerboard now we're going to be accenting beat one one two three Once more, what I like to think of is I'm using on those downbeats, the, the first beat of the measure, I'm launching the bow. I'm really pushing it to the opposite end. One and two and three and. You feel free to accent on measure 104 just using more and more bow. Once more. One and two and three and. Don't play a D and beat three of 102 like I did. That's okay. Another way to practice this section is to just practice the first beats. So, two, three, two, three, two, three. And write in all the bowings if you need to. Next thing, next way to practice it is to play only beats one and two. think you're like brushing or like really big really like you're like you're banging on a gong just keep it really cyclical so bum 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 okay feel free to do a nice retake if you need to well, that concludes today's video. Good luck and happy practicing.